Welcome to the Global Energy Leaders Podcast, powered by R-Squared Global. Welcome to another edition of the Global Energy Leaders Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Ray. So good to have you today. And today, we get into a little bit different of discussion. If you are an entrepreneur and are in the Northeast or considering moving to the Northeast of the U.S., specifically the Boston area, This is something that might be of great interest to you. Greentown Labs has a very unique deal going on where they're bringing together companies that are in the clean tech space and they're putting them in kind of like what they're calling an incubator. It's very fascinating stuff. We brought on Liz Barno, who is a Boston Globe 25 under 25 award winner from 2015 and a Forbes 30 under 30 in the energy sector in 2017. And she's also the community director at Greentown Labs. Without further ado, here's my conversation with Liz. Well, Liz, it's an honor to have on another Forbes 30 under 30 on the energy sector and also a Boston Globe's 25 under 25. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. And tell us about your journey, about how you got into energy and, you know, how you've kind of skyrocketed and hit all these big name lists so far. (laughs) Hi. Yeah, thank you. It's great to be with you. How I got into Green Town Labs and Clean Tech Entrepreneurship was sort of by accident and sort of totally planned. But I, I knew, uh, even when I was going through school, that I always wanted to work in sustainability and making systems more efficient and more sustainable. So that's what I was studying and working towards when I got a job at a startup company that was working in the clean tech sector in Boston and just totally fell in love with and realized that the the pace that they were working as a startup, making decisions really quickly and pivoting and getting results back really quickly was was totally on my level. And I loved that. So then when I was working there at that startup, they were in a space where there were other clean tech startups sharing the facilities and kind of sharing tools and best practices and expertise. And it was around the time that the, the that shared space was growing a little bit too large for all of the members to just self-manage, and they were looking for a staff. And I saw an opportunity to help not just one startup, but many, and jumped in with both feet. Awesome. And so are you from Boston originally, or did you move to the area? I moved to the area for school. So I have been here for quite a while now, but originally I'm from upstate New York. Okay, well, the only reason I ask is I am a lifelong Red Sox fan, and, you know, that's kind of odd being down here in the South, but <laughs> it's just kind of how it worked out. And so I've been to Boston uh, once and loved it, got to go to Fenway Park, and so uh, just love the city there. It's just such a beautiful place, and so um, yeah, it's it's it's, it's really a, a multi-diverse culture, and so just just great. So just just a personal question there about that. Now, are you, now I guess i got to ask, are you a Red Sox fan now? I am. Being here, you can't really not be a Red Sox fan, but I, I totally agree. I, I'm not a big sports or baseball person, but the community, um, the kind of communal interest and, and excitement around everything uh, has definitely converted me. Well, well, that's good because we don't interview Yankees fans on the show, so that works out well. We can, <laughs> we can keep going. Now, you guys have a really interesting uh, initiative going on with Greentown Labs, and you've kind of touched on it a little bit. Um, one of the things about the energy business is it's so diverse. And so no matter if you're in oil and gas or if you're in re- renewables or wherever you're at, there's just so many facets that you can only really get your head around just a very small percentage of the industry. And it seems like what you're trying to do with Greentown Labs is really bring together some of the best minds that, that are in Boston and put them in the same room. Now, they may not always work uh, one-to-one, but it allows this, this, uh, this area where they can share ideas and they can bounce stuff off each other. You know, how did that come about and how is it working out so far? Yeah, that is one of the, I think, one of the biggest benefits to a startup company coming into Greentown Labs is just the, the other members and the brain trust that's in this incubator. It, it started originally sort of organically and by accident, like I mentioned, four companies just literally wanted to, to split rent for their companies. And all of these benefits were kind of almost accidental. But um, after identifying the value of that, that's really been something that um, my work here at Greentown has been all about building and strengthening. So we do a lot of different things, starting with just the physical space that the companies are renting from us to training programs and events and opportunities for them to actually collaborate together. And it's it's kind of a pillar in our application process for membership that 
you know, being part of a community and getting benefits from that and also adding to it is, uh, is an important part of being a member. You know, one of the things uh, that I've seen, especially when I talk to people on the renewable side, is that um, their willingness to share information seems to be that they've kind of come up in an age where sharing information and being part of a community is more important than maybe traditional oil and gas companies where it's a little bit more secretive, a little bit more, hey, behind the curtain, we're not really wanting to collaborate with our competitors or people in the industry. And so it seems that that might be giving um, you know clean tech energy an advantage to catch up with big oil and gas. Would you agree with that synopsis? Yeah, and I think it's an essential piece of just entrepreneurship in general. Working on your own, uh, in your own silo is one way to do it, but certainly not the fastest. And uh, the startup companies that we see really putting themselves out there, asking for help, and and taking the steps to join incubator programs like Greentown, not only do we see them commercialize faster, but we see more of them get to that commercialization stage uh, from start to finish. And uh, clean tech is is sort of a new up-and-coming industry. So a lot of the people who are interested in sustainability and clean technology have that entrepreneurial spirit, which is is really um, supported here in the Boston area, and we're seeing great results. Okay, great. And we've thrown out that term clean tech a few times. Kind of break that down for the audience who may not be familiar with um, how you're using that term. Sure, yeah. We get this question a lot because lots of people use the term in, in a couple of different ways. And uh, I think that the stereotypical idea of clean tech is solar panels and wind turbines and renewable energy, which is certainly a piece of clean technology. But at Greentown Labs, we have a pretty broad definition of what a clean tech company is. We're looking at companies that are taking an existing system and making it more efficient. And if they are using less energy to produce the same results, that's clean tech to us. So we have a lot of members here who are working on water technologies and agriculture technologies and applications in the food industry, in appliances, in the home, and in addition to those more traditional energy generation, renewable energy companies. Okay, great. Now, I am curious. I was looking at y'all's uh, website here just a few minutes ago, and you have a very large space that you're getting ready to move into. It looks like maybe October or later this year. You know, are, mm-hmm. These entrepreneurs, are they coming from Are they, is kind of a global community that's coming to Boston? Are you trying to bring entrepreneurs there, or is there just that many energy entrepreneurs already in the Boston area? We are growing. Uh, in October of this year, of 2017, we will be doubling our physical size right here in Somerville, Massachusetts. And there has been a lot of interest uh, from the Boston area. There are a lot of universities here that are spinning out companies every year, and there there is a very steady pipeline of clean tech technologies coming out. But we are also interested in taking this expansion and this new facility to a national and international stage. Uh, We have great relationships and pipelines set up in the Boston area, but we know that this is not the only place that clean technology is happening. And we think that Boston is uh, a uniquely strong city for this industry, and we want to bring people here uh, from different parts of the U.S. and different parts of the world to take advantage of the resources that are here. And so our new facility is going to be called the Global Center for Clean Tech Innovation. And we're working with some international partners and some national partners to to broaden our reach and our recruiting. Now, you mentioned partners, and I was looking, uh, again, on the website, and there's you have a lot of partners. Kind of walk us through some of the connections that you guys offer by, you know, working inside of your, uh, um, inside of your Greentown uh, facility. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of partners that are companies that either provide products or services that are, are valuable to our, our members, these clean tech startups. So we have a lot of, uh, of legal partners and accounting partners and other business services partners that provide their services uh, for free to our members. And then we have companies that are, are producing engineering software packages and um, other products that are suited to the, the technical nature of these companies that also provide their products for free to the members. And it's become an additional offering through the incubator, this kind of suite of, of helpful resources and products that as a startup, not only do you have your preferred vendor picked out already and you have all of these companies that have been vetted and recommended by other startups in your industry, 
but you're also getting up and running a little faster. You don't have to wait for a lot of a ton of funding to start, you know, your the legal processes you want to start for your patent or to use that very expensive software program. Okay, so let me just kind of recap all that, make sure I've got it right. Um, so we have this big facility and even a bigger facility that's coming here in a few months, and this allows clean tech companies to come together, work in the same office space, they can collaborate as they need to, and they get strategic partnerships with software and engineering companies and business solutions that will help them um, grow their startup. And from a startup's perspective, you know, one of the things that gets a lot of startups is they don't have capital. They, they run out of cash too fast. And so it sounds like you guys are really kind of removing some of the hurdles that some startups may face by bringing... Um, them together into one spot. Is, is that kind of what I'm hearing? Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a great um, overview. Yeah, we, um, we we try to bring all of the other pieces of the puzzle, all of the other partners that a clean tech or energy startup would need into our incubator, whether that's actually being here um, and putting on events and we, we host lots of networking events and opportunities for um, different stakeholders to get together or virtually through some of these partnerships and relationships that we have, we we try to keep our incubator as the kind of central point where all of these different stakeholders are convening and, and working together. So I mentioned that running out of capital is one of the things that kind of, you know, is the nail in the coffin for a lot of startups. What are other things that you may say that, that audience members who are in the startup business, they're trying to get their product or service off the ground. What are, what's some advice that you would say, okay, hey, watch out for these kind of pitfalls that we've seen with companies that we've worked in the past? Yeah, there, there's a couple. Often I work with companies who are very technically founded. Uh, they are engineers and scientists and inventors who have a technology that they then want to bring to the market uh, in some way and commercialize. And it's really important on the front end to do a lot of the customer discovery work and really researching what market you're going to go after, especially if you have a technology that's applicable to a couple of different areas. Because having that clarity and talking to customers and really knowing that your solution is is needed and valuable uh, saves a lot of time. We see companies spend years sometimes uh, just figuring out what that fit, what that market fit is. So doing that on the front end, uh, I would absolutely recommend. And, you know, like follow, following what your customers are, are saying. You know, that, that there's that phrase that everybody knows, the customer is always right. Well, it's true all the way through the process because even when you're looking for money from investors, um, they want to they want to know what what cu- potential customers are saying about your technology and being flexible when a customer is saying that maybe your idea is not the fit or the solution that they're looking for. Being flexible and able to change uh, what you're going after or what you're offering is into the market is essential. No, no, that's all great advice. Um... So let me ask you this: As we look for, um, you know, clean energy and renewable energy and all this kind of um, green talk, we'll, we'll use that kind of label. It, it's really coming onto the marketplace, and you're, what you're starting to see, at least, is from my perspective, it's not only the government initiatives that are they're you know, giving grants and stuff like that. You're seeing a lot of entrepreneurs coming into the marketplace, which means it's going to be more competitive. Um, but that also means that technology and the cost and all this stuff is going to be, you know, driven down because of all these new entrepreneurs that are coming into the marketplace. Um, and I would venture to say that right. Right now, maybe this window right here is kind of the greatest expansion of green entrepreneurs that we've seen in the last, you know, maybe ever. What's kind of your take on the marketplace mm-hmm. in general with, with clean or green energy and the entrepreneurs that are coming onto the marketplace compared to what we've seen historically where it's been a lot more uh, government-funded type programs? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, there, there definitely is a big surge of, of support systems and grants and funding sources and, and entrepreneurs in this sector. And I think it's as a result of places like Greentown Labs and other incubators, accelerators, grant programs, and universities setting up the systems to be supportive of the startups in this area. But it's also just becoming very, very clear that this type of technology and these types of of industries are essential for our world. More and more, it's not just a, a feel good, let's you know, be more renewable and, and be good to the planet, but an essential thing to continue our livelihood. Okay, so I would be remiss if I didn't ask you. You've you've been on the on these lists we mentioned earlier, the Boston Globe's twenty five under twenty five, the Forbes thirty under thirty in the energy sector. 
Those are obviously big accomplishments. You work with entrepreneurs. You've obviously mm-hmm. been extremely successful yourself. Someone um, in our younger audience, maybe our younger demographics who's listening right now, and they're saying, okay, I want to get into energy. I'm not really sure what I should do, how I should proceed. You know you, you know how it is. You're, you're just trying to figure out what do you want to do in mm-hmm. life. Give us some basic advice for people yeah. that are in the that are wanting to get in the industry, or maybe they're younger and they're trying to get in. How would you advise them to navigate that stream moving forward? Yeah, um, well, I tried a, I tried a couple of different routes before before finding this one. Um, I I did a couple of internships in in government, in large companies, and in, in the legal corporate legal field, trying to figure out how I could make the impact I wanted to on on the energy industry. And really just learning throughout, whether you're a student or whether you're learning things on the job or even before that, learning about what you're really passionate about and what you're willing to put 100% into and following those opportunities has always served me really well. And sometimes it may not be the fastest route, but it's it's definitely has the most value and longevity. Awesome. Well, that's great stuff. Okay, so I know that you guys are looking for more strategic partners, if I understand correctly, and are taking applications for entrepreneurs or startups who are looking to be a part of what you guys have going on there. Could you kind of uh, let the audience know where what they need to do and what's the process and where they can find out more information about what you have going on at Greentown Labs? Yes, absolutely. Check out our website at greentownlabs.com and and all of our social media channels. We are always collecting applications from startups that are in clean tech or energy industry. We're looking for companies that are, you know, really committed that you are, you have founders that are working on your company full time and uh, you have a little bit of funding and are incorporated and and have a path that you're working towards and that you want to be part of, of a community, that um, you want to work around other entrepreneurs and collaborate with people and expand your network. And we are also always looking for partners, whether those are the corporate or business services partners who can support startups or the larger corporate energy companies that might want to work with startups to, to innovate or other other stakeholders that could provide value at some point in this ecosystem. We are a hub and a network for clean tech entrepreneurship, and we want to work with everyone. Well, great. And, and I know that I can speak for a lot of folks in Texas. We'd love to see one right here in DFW, something like that. That's a, it's, it's a great idea and um, love cl- love collaboration and all the, the benefits that come with that. So can, uh, best wishes moving forward. Thank you so much for coming on. Is there anything that we'd like uh, that you would like to plug or promote that we didn't get to today? Check us out in October. Come to Boston. Visit our new Global Center for Clean Tech Innovation. Okay. Well, if the Red Sox are in the World Series in October, I will be there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will be there. We'll awesome. do a, we'll do a remote pod- yeah. We'll do a remote podcast, and then I'll go to the game. Or I don't know if I can afford to go to the game. I'll sit outside the game or something. So thank you so much for coming on. This <laughs> has been very inform- informative. We'll link to all your stuff in the show notes so the listeners can go and find out more about you and your. We'll link to your thirty under thirty article and of course Green Town Labs. Thank you so much for coming on, Liz. I really enjoyed the conversation today. You are so welcome. Thank you. Thanks again to Liz for coming on. And if you enjoyed the show and want to find out more about what they have going on. Check out the show notes page at globalenergymedia.com where you can find all the links to everything we discussed. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, keep climbing. Thanks for listening to the Global Energy Leaders Podcast, powered by R Squared Global. 